Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly and I'm a mixed media artist who specializes in gouache paint, ink work, and sometimes I do digital painting. In today's video, I will be showing you how I painted these daffodils. This is going to be a spring inspired repeat pattern. And I plan on putting this on a ton of stuff, which I will get into later. But first of all, here's my reference photo. Hi, hello, I go on walks with my dog. This is my dog, her name's Luna. She's a Wheaton Terrier, she's crazy. Um, yeah, we go outside a lot. And I've started to just document and kind of create my own field guide, I guess you could say, of reference photos. Which I will get into that also later too. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just so excited today. Um, but yeah. So let's get into what I'm literally doing right now. So I'm doing the underpainting of these daffodils. I used the Derwent watercolor pencils. Well, first of all, for the sketch and outline of all of the flowers, I did an outline using yellow ochre, and then I did the shadows with a violet watercolor pencil, and then I filled in the yellow center of the daffodil with just a regular yellow. I then began to build up this underpainting layer by adding some actual watercolors. What I did with that was I mixed together a tiny bit of yellow watercolor with titanium white gouache. So it's like a semi-transparent, a little bit more opaque mixture. And I applied that anywhere there's going to be light hitting the petals. And then for the shadow areas, I just went in with straight up ultraviolet watercolor paint and I used that for the shadows and I really like using straight up watercolor specifically for this stage for the shadows because they blend beautifully. I use the brand Mgram and they actually use honey in their paints. They blend like a dream. I could talk about it for a century but I'm not going to so there's that. Then I go back in and start adding some more titanium white. I'm building up some more values and some more opacity and it's starting to slowly but surely take shape. So then I started doing the same thing to the other daffodil flower and for the majority of the video, I will just be working on this one flower. I got super focused and just zoned out painting this one flower and I kind of left the other one the way it was, but I will go back to that later and show you the difference before and after and what a huge difference different layers and different colors can make in your painting, especially with contrast and detailing. So the reason why I always start with a watercolor pencil or just plain watercolor base for all of my paintings is because usually with painting you start with a thin layer and then as you build up to more details the less water or paint thinner you end up using specifically with fine-tuned details you might want some more textural components and you really don't want that on the first layer of your painting because first of all you're not going to have form established yet so you don't want to be doing details already anyways but even if you were for some reason wanting to do that doing thinner layers over a thicker layer can sometimes just muddy up the whole thing right now i'm in the stage where i have the form established using a mixture of watercolor and gouache and i feel like it's at the point where i can go into more specific areas with some titanium white gouache paint. I have just a smidge of yellow mixed into it, so it's off white in color, it's more cream colored. And I did this flicking motion with a damp brush and some paint on my brush, not too much though. I always blot it off on a paper towel before applying the paint. And I did this flicking motion and this gives the illusion of those very minimal ridges that, and texture that you can see on flower petals. Moving to the center of the daffodil, this is when I got some more yellow watercolors. And I just put that across the whole surface area of the center. And once I have that yellow punched up quite a bit, 
I use a lot more yellow ochre watercolor to create more shading within the dips and valleys in the ruffles. And I used more titanium white gouache paint mixed with yellow to create more of a light yellow that's vibrant, more like a vibrant pastel yellow. I used that for the highlights around the ridges. I also did a similar flicking motion to create those flower petal ridges and it also helps to sharpen the edges of those ruffles and really make them appear three-dimensional. Okay, so this part is pretty rinse and repeat, so I thought right here would be a good time to talk about this project and explain the bigger scope of it beyond just these daffodils. As I said earlier, I walk my dog a lot, all right? And I like taking her on trails and there's tons of beautiful things that grow here in Washington that I'm just really inspired by. I really feel in tune with nature and it's my happy place. So I thought I would do more repeat patterns and spot illustrations inspired by each season. And I'm going to take my own pictures and essentially create my own field guide, I guess you could call it, for artistic purposes, not necessarily scientific purposes. And I want to create basically a catalog of reference photos that also other artists can use too. So this goes beyond just my own work that I'm creating. I want to compile all these photographs and create a catalog or Pinterest board of reference photos for other artists to use. I don't know, I just thought, I wanted to make something that would be useful for other artists that is relatively simple for me to do and provide and it's something I'm doing anyways and I might as well share it and it makes me happy and it makes my dog happy because she gets to go out on walks all the time and she gets a ton of exercise let me tell you so if you're interested in using any of my reference photos that I provide in these videos and more like other ones I am going to put a link below in the description box of the Pinterest board that I'm going to create. And my goal is to organize it by season and location so that you can see things that would grow in a certain area during a certain time and get more specific with what you're looking for. So I hope that helps someone out there. I know it would have helped me in the past, so, <laughs> so I'm doing it. All right, back to the painting process. So right here, I have, you know, a pretty good foundation. I still consider this a foundation. I think other people would probably stop here. No, I, I like a lot of contrast and a lot of layers, but that's just me personally. And I just enjoy the process of layering and layering and layering. So yeah i i i honestly thought about just stopping here but i really wanted to push and see how far i could take this so what i wound up doing was doing more thin layers of watercolor over the gouache to just tint it a bit and it mixes in nicely it doesn't mess up the gouache paint too much and on the white petals on the outside i added more ultraviolet watercolor and that just enhanced the shadows that much more basically what i'm doing is i'm going back in with shadows and highlight colors going back and forth with layers of those and thin layers to enhance the contrast so i did that with the white petals on the outside now i did the same thing with the yellow center I didn't like how orange it was turning out, so I just tinted the whole thing with yellow watercolor. I was really scared of it disturbing the details I did, but honestly, watercolor on top of gouache. I know I say this a lot about watercolor pencils. Like, if you want to be very specific and very careful, but you need to tint a little area in your painting, watercolor pencils are definitely the way to go. But honestly, watercolor on top of gouache, not bad. Not bad. It You can risk smudging a bit. But it's not, it's not anything like trying to go in with gouache on top of gouache. It will change the whole thing. It's like a little tint over the top, like a little glaze. And I really love it. It reminds me of oil painting in a way. All right, so now I'm going to explain the part that I messed up. I wanted to further enhance the contrast. So what I'm doing now is being even more specific with my paint placement to really enhance detail 
and contrast and in the very like the darkest dark shadows that would be on the petals i used Payne's gray to really enhance the darkest darks of the white petals so with a light colored petal like this the shadows aren't going to be super dark in general but compared to you know the overall the local color of the petals it's going to be the shadows are going to be pretty dark uh considering how high of contrast i want it to be the problem was i loved the way it created this hd just super enhanced sharp image i really liked how it sharpened the whole thing the thing i didn't like is how blue it was what i should have done was just gone in with some ultraviolet purple mixed in with some ivory black i think that would have given the effect i really wanted because the Payne's gray was way too blue and what i did was after sculpting out the highlights and creating more definition against this Payne's gray shading right here i went back in with a violet watercolor pencil to bring that warmth back while it's still being cool in the shaded areas so it wound up being fine but it was just an extra step you live and you learn live laugh love whatever in this stage where i'm at with the whole piece i'm barely using any water again i usually dip my brush into water select the color i want and then i blot it on some paper towels i have handy right next to me and that usually makes it the right consistency for doing more detailed work it also is the perfect consistency for smudging and blending these layers together and really melding them together. I like blurring the edges a bit together into these ridge patterns that organically create shapes for these petals and it gives the illusion of the ridges you would see in the petal veins. And the final details, I'm going back in with some more white gouache paint and I'm doing a little bit more water than I would normally do because I want it to mix with whatever color is underneath. I don't want it to be stark white. I'm doing that all over just in different areas, including the center of the daffodil. I don't know if you remember the flower from earlier that I didn't work on and I just totally focused on the other one, but I just wanted to show you a quick before and after to show you the difference that these other layers of contrasting colors can make and how big of an impact it has on the overall detail and value of the painting. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Check out that Pinterest board I'm going to have for reference photos and follow for more field guide reference photo inspiration stuff uh and i will see you next week bye